Good afternoon and welcome to the promotion ceremony in honor of Major General Michelle H. Bradenkamp. Our host for today's ceremony is the Commander, United States Cyber Command and Director, National Security Agency, Chief Central Security Service, General Paul M. Nakasone. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem sung by Staff Sergeant David Zabo and for the invocation offered by Chaplain Colonel Larry Daybeck. early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glow, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the light? Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Colonel Larry Daybeck. Feel free to join me as I pray. Father, I thank you for the life and leadership of Major General Michelle Bradenkamp. Lord, at every echelon, she has proven herself as an extraordinary leader of character, competence, and commitment. General Bradenkamp's faithful service has shaped the very fabric of our nation's security. Thank you, Lord. And now you have seen fit to promote her to Lieutenant General with increased responsibility for our nation's safekeeping. Father, I ask you to faithfully give her continued wisdom and courage equal to the task. And I ask that she remains faithful to you in all of her callings as a spouse, as a parent, and now as a Lieutenant General officer. May she be dependent upon you and all that she does. In all your almighty name I pray, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General Nakasone. So before I begin today, for the United States Army Brass Quintet, for Staff Sergeant David Zabo, for our chaplain, for the protocol offices here at the Army and U.S. Cyber Command, please join me in a round of applause. <laughs> Director Haynes of Rio, Principal Deputy Dixon, General Rod and Ginny, fellow general and flag officers, friends of our army, friends of the Braden Camp family. I can't tell you how good it is to be back with the United States Army. <laughs> Here in Comney Hall, home of the Old Guard, the third U.S. Infantry Regiment, the longest, oldest serving active duty in our army. And thinking about 
the ceremonies that have taken place prior to Michelle's today. You know, Susan and my born on date is rapidly getting close to expiring. And as we get closer to the end, I think perhaps the more intro or introspective we become in terms of our own careers, uh, the people that we meet along the way, the experiences that we've had. And I would share with you that the Nakasones have had a front row seat to the Braden camps. Before there even was the Braden camps, it was the Hermans in the Braden camps. And having served with them, I think Susan would echo what I would tell you today is that there is no finer Army family than the Braden camps. They epitomize exactly what we're looking in our senior leaders, those that can accomplish hard missions, those that can take care of our soldiers, those that look after their families, those that have that spirit of selfless service. And so today, as I was thinking about Michelle and Trevor, I was thinking about perhaps the key element that our Army, I think, does so well, and that's develop leaders. The development of leaders, the selection of leaders, the advancement of leaders. I would tell you that Michelle Bradenkamp personifies our Army's success in developing, selecting, and advancing strong leaders. And I think there are three reasons for that. First of all, she began her career and quickly established that she was going to be tactically and technically proficient. She began in the 2nd Infantry Division, the 102nd Ahmad Battalion. In fact, her first assignment overseas, I think, provided her the necessary soldier skills that allowed her to have success later on in places like the 82nd Airborne Division and Joint Special Operations Command back in Korea being the Assistant Chief of Staff, G2, for the 101st Airborne Division in combat. She epitomizes this idea of ensuring that you know what you do and how you do it and do it well. The second thing is, is that Michelle, she treats her work as a profession. It's not a job for her, it's a profession. It's a lifelong study. It's this idea of being able to ensure that you never stop learning. Whether or not that's on the demilitarized zone, whether or not that's at the 704th of my brigade, whether or not that's at the Director of National Intelligence. This lifelong quest for learning began early, was fostered at Spring Hill College, and certainly has been developed throughout her Army career. And the final thing I think I would share with you is, is that Michelle is the type of officer we give our toughest problems to solve. Whether or not that's understanding how to deploy your platoon at 1,500 feet as you're coming out the door, or whether or not that's on the ground in a foreign country, whether or not that's with a series of challenging partners, or whether or not that's with the latest technology. We've sent Michelle throughout her career to command and lead to be a principal staff officer in units that were looking for her to develop, deploy, and deliver. And she has done just that. And so when I thought of those three things, I thought, how was she able to do that? What is it that's special about her? What is it special about what she's done that has given her that advantage to rise to the rank of Lieutenant General? And I think, again, there are three reasons. First of all is her strong, unabiding faith in what she's doing and what she needs to do. This faith was obviously developed very, very early by her mother, fostered by her sisters, Maria and Tanya, but also encouraged by her own family. The second piece is, is that she has an incredible network of friends. Wherever you go, wherever you see someone that has been in the Army, particularly has been a paratrooper, and you mention the words, Michelle Bradenkamp, people will light up. Hey, she's my friend. She helped me out. She is an incredible leader. And that network of friends has allowed her to be successful at the tactical, operational, and strategic levels. And then finally, it's her family. It's her mother, it's her sisters. 
It's her children, Gavin and Greer, and most importantly, it's her husband, who has shared both the responsibilities of being Army officer, leader, but also, also father, provider, mother, supporter. And so today, as our Army gets ready to promote Michelle Bradenkamp, I am incredibly pleased because we have developed, we have selected, and now we're going to advance the next generation of our senior leaders. Thank you very much. Major General Bradenkamp and family, please join General Nakasone in front of the flags. Please remain seated during the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Michelle H. Bradenkamp. In view of these qualities and her demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, she is therefore promoted from Major General to Lieutenant General by order of the Secretary of the Army. General Nakasone will now reaffirm the oath of office to Lieutenant General Bradenkamp. I state your full name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear a true faith and allegiance to the same. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Michelle H. Bradenkamp. Wow, so good evening, everybody. Um, 
This is quite humbling when you look across the room and you look at the number of distinguished guests and friends um, amongst us. It's, uh, it really does take my breath away. So uh, thank you very much. Um, I am so honored to see so many of you here this evening. Um, and so thank you for coming. First, I'd like to recognize a number of prominent guests. Uh, first and foremost, the Director of National Intelligence, Honorable Haynes, ma'am, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know I've only been in the seat for a couple of weeks, but I absolutely understand how busy you are. And I so appreciate you taking some of your personal time to be here for myself and for my family. It makes it that much meaningful, so thank you very much. Honorables Dixon, Leftig, Casey, Ayers, and Gibson. I see you back there, ma'am. Thanks for taking the time. General and Mrs. Nakasone, Susan, I see you there. General Retired and Mrs. Rodriguez. General Rod, always great to see you. Jenny, Mrs. Mingus, Amy, I see you out there as well. And Mrs. McChrystal, Annie, thanks for being here. I heard General McChrystal couldn't make it because he has the Yale football team, but they could have all fit in this forum here, so we would have welcomed them with open arms. So we're so grateful that you can all join us uh, this evening. And I do uh, want to echo what General Nakasone alluded to in terms of recognizing those that have really put together this special event tonight. Um, initially, we were going to do a very, very small ceremony um, where we could only accommodate maybe a handful of folks. Um, but my mother could not make it into town uh, due to engagement, and here we are today. Right, And so it does require much more of a heavy lift. And uh, I know personally how much work uh, the team puts into making these events happen. And um, I am so grateful. So to the MDW and the US Cybercom protocol teams, as well as my XO, Colonel Leidenberg, I don't know where you are there. I see you out there. Uh, James, thank you very much for really facilitating and, and being the mastermind of tonight. To the Army Band, the Quintet, you're absolutely wonderful. I've always been able to benefit from your tremendous performances. Um, and I know you've got two of us, right? Super big fans, but thank you always for what you do. As well as to our fantastic um, choral singer, thank you very much, and our narrator. Old Guard always does a fantastic job. They are so professional, and they truly represent what's best in our Army, so thank you and to Chaplain Daybeck. Larry, um, I did see you. Um, thank you very much for everything that you do for others as a chaplain, as a man, and as my friend. Thank you very much, and it's always great to see you and Kathy. General Nakasone, wow. Sir, thank you. I know I mentioned it to you earlier, but I really do appreciate you officiating tonight. Um, as you all know, General Nakasone and Susan will have a change, of course, a major milestone in, in their life next, uh, next week. And there's also a lot going on in the world today, right, that, I'm, that is affecting uh, the national security uh, of our nation. And uh, I really do appreciate you, sir, for, for carving out the time and always making time for us, no matter what's going on. Um, it's not lost on us, and uh, we do really appreciate it. And I personally want to say thank you for your leadership, for investing in me, and for genuinely really taking care of not just me, but my family over the course of 30 years. Yes, I said that, 30 years. Makes me uh, feel like I'm really getting up there. Um, and about three, three decades ago, sir, I know uh, serving together, doing some uh, pretty amazing collection operations out um, along the DMZ, and it just goes by really fast, but I absolutely believe that I've learned from the best, and so I appreciate all you've done. I do have a number of uh, other mentors out there who provide me great counsel and coaching, and I absolutely do have to give some recognition because I would not be here if I did not get uh, a lot of that coaching. Some of it was uh, hard knocks, right? But I probably deserved it um, <laughs> in terms of learning and growing. Uh, but General Rodriguez, uh, Lieutenant General Retired Donahue, and Colonel Alsup uh, retired as well. Um, tremendous influential leaders in my life uh, that have taught me so much and it didn't end once I stopped working for you. You continue to uh, reach out and, and help no matter what, so thank you very much. Um, 
I really want to go through names, um, but I'm going to hold back on that because um, I have so many friends and teammates uh, out there that I'm looking at right now, and some of them are joining us virtually as well. Um, and many of them have been along the way with us for over 30 years as we've been navigating through the Army. Um, some very, very tough times um, sometimes, especially with the multiple combat deployments. And uh, I just want you to know how much you mean to Trevor and I. Um, just as General Nakasone alluded to, you know, sometimes the best learning and growing you get is from your peers. And it's just been absolutely amazing. And we are very, very fortunate and lucky to have some of the best friends that are out there that are continually supporting us, um, advising us, and just sometimes lending an ear. And uh, I just want you all to know how much that it truly means to us because we would not be able to continue to serve and be here if it weren't for you, so thank you. I do have to give a shout out to the ODNI team. Um, this is my new family. I just entered into the team, um, but Honorable Haynes, uh, the ODNI leaders, as well as uh, the Dama team. I know Dama team, you guys are out there, right? I'll give you a shout out. Um, I am just so honored to be a part of this team now, and I know um, I'm just arriving on board, but you all actually took the time um, out of your schedules to be here tonight, and it is very, very meaningful, because it's very easy to say no and uh, get back to work, right? So th thank you very much, and uh, I truly, truly look forward to working with each of you and really helping make a difference in being a part of the team. So thank you. And to my family, yes, this is my final uh, thank you here. Um, to my mother and to my sisters, um, and Tracy, that does include you, right? My sister, um, not by blood, right, <laughs> but by connection. Uh, thank you all for your love and support. Um, they've always been there for us. And even when you have to go through those tough times, you know, when you have to deploy and unfortunately, uh, leave your, your children, right, for a year, and you've got to have that support network of folks that are really going to be able to uh, make sure that they're in good hands, and my family has always been able to do that for us, um, the trust, the confidence, and the love, and uh, again, we wouldn't be able to do this without you, so thank you. And this will be a hard one, my husband Trevor, General Nakasone is spot on, um, he is absolutely the most amazing man I know, I definitely married up with Trevor. Um, many of you probably know this, but he also has a very, very complicated and challenging command. Uh, besides being an awesome husband and a wonderful father and a fantastic friend, um, he commands a Joint Task Force, National Capital Region, as well as the Military District of Washington. Um, he does it extremely well, and I am always learning and in awe of everything that he does. Um, but, of course, I'm a little biased, and I will say, more importantly, um, he is just absolutely the best husband, the best friend, and the best confidant and father. Um, and I'm just so proud of you, Trevor. And uh, we only have one commander in the house now, and that is not me. <laughs> commander. So. And then to uh, our children, um, and you saw them up, up in front, they're already virtually towering over me, right? But uh, Gavin and Greer, uh, you, you know how much uh, Daddy and I love you. I know we tell you often, but you don't have a choice in this, right? You don't have a choice in terms of being uh, an Army brat or an Army kid, uh, but you do it so well, um, and you don't complain about it. You're so resilient. You go with the stride, and you're just great kids, and you're kind, wonderful people, and that's all we can ask for. And so just know how proud we are of you and how much we love you, and thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to sacrifice. We love you. So I, I am closing now, and I just uh, I wanted to share uh, a, a little bit of something I think that is very personal to me that really kind of describes um, why I am here and why am, I am still serving. Um, I was raised in a military family, and I spent a lot of my upbringing growing up abroad. And I learned at a very early age, um, as I was growing up, how lucky we were really to be U.S. citizens. Uh, my mom became a U.S. citizen um, later in, in life when we were in elementary school. 
but we were really appreciative of what we had and the ability to live in a country where we had freedom and we had opportunities. And, uh, and so my parents taught us really the importance of service. Service is a part of our citizenship. And so uh, service comes in many ways. It doesn't just come through wearing the uniform and we clearly understood that. And so um, as I was growing up, I decided that I would begin my service uh, to the nation um, in joining the Army. And I never intended to make a career of it, um, and here I am today. Um, it really helped put me through school, um, put me uh, so I could attend college, and uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. And, uh, and I am so, so grateful for the opportunities that is provided to me. Um, I truly enjoyed the mission. Um, actually, it's kind of nice, right, to get paid to jump out of airplanes and rappel out of helicopters, uh, maybe back then. <laughs> um, and, and really, I truly enjoyed the mission of leading and doing intelligence work. Um, but what really inspired me and kept me going and kept me committed and in were the people. And, uh, and that stands true today. And that really is all of you. Um, because you are the people, and you have all impacted me and have enabled me and have invested in me and have taught me um, to really help enable me to be where I am today. I've had the privilege to really work with some tremendous people um, throughout my entire career, and so I just want to say thank you very much because you are the ones that have provided me with support, opportunities, and really the growth uh, to get me to this point today. Um, so in closing, I am just extremely humbled. Um, I'm grateful that I'm entrusted to be able to continue to serve today. Um, and I clearly, clearly understand the responsibility of what I have. Um, and I'll absolutely do good for others and make it matter each and every day. So thank you all for attending. Um, it means a lot to uh, myself and our entire family that you took the time to be here tonight. And I do want to provide an announcement that we are having a very uh, low-key gathering at our quarters. So everybody's invited. And it's right around the corner. And we'd, we'd love to have you so we can actually uh, catch up with some, some folks one-on-one. -on -one. But thank you very much. I'm honored that you're here. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in singing the Army song. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to bear the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all, all we have done fighting till. Please join Lieutenant General Braden Camp and Major General Braden Camp in the receiving line and join them for a reception immediately following the ceremony at their residence. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your evening.